Hey guys, welcome to Top Channel 101, and today I'm going to be talking about why Houdini is so much easier than Blender. And the only reason why you shouldn't take up Houdini should only be that you can't afford it, it's too expensive for you. Otherwise, you should really be using uh, the Houdini Blender workflow. And today I'm just going to show you how I made this fountain simulation in Houdini. The results you achieve with this type of workflow, they're just remarkable. This simulation took me about like 20 minutes to pull off. And uh, let me show you the, the entire workflow. So this is uh, uh, the model I'm using. It's a free model from Ketchfab by Adril Krish Top. So going to start a new geometry stream here. Geometry. And all I have to do with importing is use the USD import import node and uh, I can navigate to. Uh, right now it's too big so I can just use a match size to scale it down to a target size of one unit. I'm just going to use scale to fit and uh, take a look at this. Hit F to zoom in. And I want to be able to edit this. So in the USD node, I'm just going to unpack it to have access to the geometry and everything. So yeah, pack to polygons so that I can see the polygons. You can see how dense this is. So I can use a remesh node to remesh this. Uh, let me use uh, maybe 0 0.5. Uh, this is good enough for the collider and now I can do a VLAM simulation. I want uh, water to be ejected from here up here. So I'm going to use a sphere, polysphere. Let me template this. I can scale this down and then move it up to where I want my fountain to begin. I can turn this into a VLAM fluid by using the VLAM fluid config and uh, take a look at this. Create points from, from volume and uh, I'm going to use 0 0.01. Uh, for the points you can see my particles that are going to be turned into the fluid right away I can add a VLAM solver and test out my simulation I can connect this and play back and you can see that the particles are falling down I can add a ground perfect and I'm already seeing that uh, my fountain is below uh, the ground so I'm going to use the match size here to make sure that it's centered uh, the, the bottom is at the ground there and uh, now I, I can bring this in as a collider so I'm just going to drag this to the left here so that I can connect it I can I can connect this easily and now it's being used as uh, the collider for my particles so if I simulate again oh, I need to raise my sphere above and uh, take a look template this so right about there hit play and you can see what we have I'm also going to go to the visualizer and turn off the show collision. So you can see that our collider is working and uh, everything is working. But uh, we want to continuously be emitting these fluids. Now, when you set up the VLAM solver like this, this setup here is setting up the initial state of your simulations. So we have plugged in the fluids, plugged in the constraints and even the collider. So it's setting up the initial state of the fluids. And uh, after it does that, it doesn't check back on whatever we plugged in here. So it has everything set up and uh, it doesn't consider uh, any nodes we have done here anymore on the next frame. But uh, if you want to uh, continuously update the simulation using uh, this geometry, we have to disconnect this, maybe just leave the collider because that can be set up on the first frame. We don't have to update it constantly. And uh, all I need is this fluid. I'm going to add a reference to, to that using the null. So I'm going to call this source. So now to set it up, to update on every frame, I can just enter uh, the VLAM solver by double clicking on it. And uh, I can use the VLAM source to bring my particles, which are these here. So if I take a look at that, if I take a look at this, you can see that uh, those are our particles. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this null and uh, come in here and paste it into this path here so that this can target uh, these particles here. We have, and uh, now if I plug this into the source and go back to frame one, we still have the same thing going on. So if I play back, you can see what we have. Uh, but what I can do is in the source here, you can change the emission type from once to every frame or every sub-step. And now you have an emitter that emits on every frame, uh, which is exactly what we need. And uh, we already have a fountain. If you want to stop there, you can just use a, a particle fluid surface to mesh your, your fluids. So let's go back here. Let's find a frame like this and just make sure that the particle separation is at least the same as the particle size here. So I'll do 0 0.01. Now you can see with just this setup, we have the particles, we have the simulation and you can see the simulation without everything else. So 
this fills up and then the another level fills up and uh, then the other level fills up and uh, then you turn these into into this i can change the visualizer to viscosity here or velocity uh, to to give this some color and you can see how this looks obviously the quality is going to depend on the particle size so i can just use 0.05 to improve the quality of the simulation i can also come to the meshing here make sure that this is also 0.05 and uh, we can run the simulation again so i will uh, just first run this and you can see now it takes too much time filling up these areas and uh, most of the time the camera is going to be uh, down here it's very unlikely that it's going to be above here and even when it's above here uh the fluid is going to be everywhere that you don't see that what i would do here is uh come here on the this mesh here i use the curve from edges node and i'm just going to use this mesh and i'm just going to select the edges these edges here let me go to edge mode and select this hit enter so that this is turned into an edge and I, I can use a polyfill to fill that just like that and i can duplicate this again and this time rem remove this selection and select again this time i'll select this edge loop press enter and uh, i need a third one get rid of this and select uh, this last edge loop press enter and i can do a polyfill for all of these so another polyfill here another polyfill here uh, so we have uh, these covers now i can merge them using a merge tool and join them back to our mesh so that we cover these areas let me use another merge here just like this and look at that we have i might want to push this down a bit so i'm going to use a transform drag this into the collider so that this so that this becomes our new collider but you can see that the, the normals for this are flipped so i'm just going to use our reverse reverse node here so to reverse the normals and now our simulation our collider looks like this so we won't have to fill the entire mesh this side here uh, so now if i run the simulation again playback you see that it's not it doesn't have to fill up the entire mesh again and, and now you can even take a look at uh, this simulation so that's all you have to do then you export to blender and uh, you're ready to go so yeah another thing maybe i didn't show is that uh, uh, you can easily add velocity uh, for example if i go back to the to the example we had here I can easily give these particles some velocity so this is our fluid source if i play back uh, they are just the particles are, are emitted down once i can add a point velocity which would give all of these points some initial velocity so i can add uh, an initial velocity upwards so let's do a value of five and uh, the particles will first shoot upwards before they go down so i think that's too fast yeah something like that so you can see how they're shooting up and down and uh, yeah uh, if you want you can even come here and uh, give this some um, noise that way the particles are can just be shot in any direction i just made this video just to show you how easy houdini is to set up things like this and uh, yeah it's it's procedural nature enables you to just do quite a lot of things that are basically impossible to do in blender so if you want to pick up houdini they do have a free version on their website if you want to learn i have a course that goes through houdini explaining everything that i've done here and even more so if you want to check that out links should be in the description thank you for watching see you in the next video